get our one, Aussie Mark here. And tonight I just want to show a couple of new knives that have arrived recently. And both of these I won in prizes here on YouTube. Um, the first knife I'll show you is this one. It's a Mora and it's a 510 Ray Mears. Now I won this from a gentleman in the United States, Nebulax123, Bruce. Won it in his context. I think it was second prize in his context. Actually, I think both these are second prize. What's interesting about this one is that it's a Ray Mears Bushcraft one. I understand that these are no longer viable and uh, possibly something of a collectible. It's a carbon steel one there. Quite a nice little knife. Ambidextrous sheath, which of course suits me nice, being the weirdo rebel left-hander that I am. Um, I can't see me using this knife. I, I really think this will be collectible just because of that stamping on the blade there. But uh, And also, you know, it'll just, just go to the collection. It's also, I got it from... Uh, from a fellow YouTuber, so I go out and beat the hell out of it. I just don't think that's what this one's for. I did, oddly enough, on the same day that arrived, buy this one for myself, which is a Mora Clipper, and they both arrived the same day. So from having no Mora knives, I've suddenly got two. This one's basically um, hanging on the wall in my workshop here as my uh, my new shop knife, so that's that's its purpose in life. Mainly because it's great for hanging on the wall, and it's only got a right-hand mount sheaf, which is no good to me on my belt. So more has gone backwards a little bit, at least as far as sheath design for us left-handers. So that's the first one that I want to show you. The second one, it's another Swedish knife, interestingly enough. So both um, competitions I've come second in, and both prizes have been Swedish knives. Now this one came from St. Schmollhaus, Stefan, over in Germany. And this is a, a really lovely knife. It's an Ecker. It's a little lanyard there for it, come in this little pouch. And it's a Model 88 Masua. Some of you guys would have actually seen this on Stefan's channel in his competition video, I'm sure. Now, I don't know what type of wood this is, um, but it's it's just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful knife. It's actually made out of one piece of wood, and they machine that, that slot into it. And it's locking blade, very, very thin, lovely shape, a little hollow ground there. So, yeah, I won't dwell on that too long, but... Yeah, it's just a stunningly beautiful knife. Um, I'll probably give this some light use, but again, I see this one for me as mostly collectible, but I, I, I'll carry it every now and again. But, um, it's actually sitting on my display shelf with my uh, my case knives at the moment, and uh, it looks just fantastic there. So, um, to Stefan and Bruce, thank you both gentlemen uh, for running the competitions, and um, yeah, hopefully I'll uh, have a competition going here soon. Maybe you guys will get lucky and, and win something. And the other knife I just want to roll in for something a bit different tonight and it's a knife I've had for probably over 25 years and it's copped a lot of abuse it lives in here on my tool belt when I was doing trade work and, and everything else I, used to, I found this pouch on this tool belt and this knife just happened to fit in there rather neatly and over the years it's been abused and used for everything from cutting carpet um, basically anything you care to name it's something I bought way back in the 80s as you can see they're locking blade stainless steel I'll bring that up, hopefully we'll see it. It's made by Ator, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, in Spain. Now that company still exists, I just had a bit of a look on the internet. Apparently they were founded in 1939. And it's a skinny knife, as you can see there, it's got a nice drop point. Really interesting shape, it's quite comfortable, very narrow in profile. It's got uh, basically a brass frame with some kind of timber inlay, no idea what sort of timber inlay. And you can probably see on the bolsters there, some etching of hunting scenes. I'm not sure which way that's supposed to go that way around. So the deer on that one. And it's the same on the other side. And it's pretty grimy and pretty horrible. And I thought what might be just a bit of fun. I'm not going to get um, too carried away and try and bring it back to museum condition, but get into it, give it a little bit of polish and everything, and try and bring it back to some of its former glory so you guys can have a bit of a look at it. So we might get stuck into that. Okay, so I've got some different grits of wet and dry sandpaper here and some bright shine, which is a cotton wadding, if I can get the lid off it. That'll be really handy. It's impregnated with a uh, polish, so it'll be for the handle and everything. Now what I'm going to do, so I want to uh, work on the handle first off. I just don't want to uh, carve myself to pieces on the blade. It actually has got a, a little bit of a half piece edge on it. So I'm just going to put a bit of duct tape. Now what do we do with our duct tape around that edge? Just to make sure that for a bit of luck I won't uh, carve myself up on this thing. Right, and we'll get into it. Now probably, 
I'll start with 400 grit now. I'm just kind of experimenting as I go here. I don't want to uh, just scratch it up and make things worse, but what I'll no doubt do with this video is I'll um, sort of cut it in and out. Time lapse for one of the uh, for one of the bit of terminal that won't be anything quite as fancy as proper time lapse. But I'm not sure how long this is actually going to take. It's um, it's about 13 minutes past six as I start, so let's see how long it takes as I go. Just to give you guys an indication. You can see already there's some of that brass starting to, to shine through, and this should also hopefully bring up some of that timber. Okay, so in doing the 400 grit, as you can see there, the brass is coming up quite well. There's a, a lot of the tarnish or gunk or whatever that's, that's in here where the um, timber inlay is obviously sitting proud of the brass. So I'm thinking what I'm going to need to do is get the sandpaper down and uh, put on a sandy block and try and bring that inlay down flush. It's the same on that side there, just to try and uh, get in there a little bit better and even everything up. So I'll have a bit of a go at that. Okay, about 15 minutes later, so much running using a little bit of 400 grit. I've gone through two of those, we start on that one, and that's just on this one side. See there, got it down to the point where those inlays are reasonably flush. You can see it's starting to shine up, and it's a heck of a lot better than the other side, just still got to get to. And again, you can just see in that area there that, that build up of gunk, that's where the inlays are sitting proud, so that's got to, got to come down. It's a really substantial build up of, of stuff on that. So, I'll um, hit this side with the 400, and uh, then we'll start working down to the finer grades and then onto the polish and hopefully after that get to the blade if it's not. Okay, this has taken a fair bit more than I thought. So I went from the 400 to 800 to 1200 and all I hit was some 1500 grit. And that's what we're ending up with. You can see all the timber's starting to show up really nice on that side. That side there it's quite a bit darker now. I think that's because this other side is probably sitting a lot more proud, so I've taken a lot more of that um, that wood away and getting down down level. So that side's a little bit darker. That's no big deal. So from here, what I want to do is get into it with this. Um, I'll say it's called bright shine. This metal polish on this cotton wadding. And the good thing about this is it doesn't leave any residues behind, unlike some other metal polishes. So that'll be handy. I don't want to um, have to clean up residue from all the nooks and crannies. It's going to be hard enough to get into into those as it is. So I'll just polish for a little while. You guys all just amuse yourselves. Do whatever it is you do. And we'll come back and see where we're looking. Okay, so I've attacked it with the uh, bright shine polish. See how the brass has come up pretty well. Still a little bit of tarnish and nicks and everything that I think that gives a bit of character. After all things probably well over 25 years old. I gave the blade a bit of a, a very, very light polish with that polish as well, just to clean it up a little bit. It wasn't too bad. It's obviously really good quality stainless steel. It's been neglected like you wouldn't believe, and uh, there's no actual rust or pitting or anything like that on it. So, yeah, that's come up quite decent. We'll just show those little engravings on the side there, down into the timber. Of course, it is a knife, so I guess the question is, will it cut? I'm not feeling particularly confident. I haven't touched the edge. At least not since last time I sharpened it, which was some months ago. Two feet, but not too bad. That's something I'll fix up. But I won't worry about doing that now. So, all in all, I'm quite, uh, quite happy with how that came out. Time on it? No, probably the best part of an hour. All up, I guess. Maybe a little bit more. I kind of lost track. That was quite fun. Basically in between having the shot I just put, turned the music up and uh, lost myself in the job. So there we have it. Job done for the moment. Alright guys, thanks very much for watching. See you next time. Bye. Okay, who was I kidding? Of course I wasn't going to put it down about sharp in it. So I ran it over the Spyderco sharp maker, put a 40 degree inclusive angle on it, stropped it and course, still a little bit ordinary, just because I want 
went on video. It's cutting better before. So that that way. Not bad. Not bad at all. Thanks again for watching.